Hello, everyone, and welcome to My Sex Bio. My name is Pierce Delahunt. I'm the facilitator for the series called Fucking Capitalism, a series that takes a look at political economy and sexuality, uh, the connections between the two, and all kinds of implications from that. Um, so we're going to be checking out the intro that I do for all the fucking capitalism uh, uh, talks that we give just to make sure everyone's on the same page. So this will be that little piece about political economy. Um, before that, I want to say that um, a little bit about myself. I am an activist educator. I call myself a social emotional leftist, which is just to say that I take the pieces of social emotional learning and I take the pieces of socialist politic and I try to bring them together in a way that is uh, clear and understandable for everyone. Um, and uh, in that, I want to be clear that I personally occupy many positions of power and privilege. Um, and in the context of this, I also want to name that the facilitator uh, is a position of power and privilege. Um, and that I'm not profiting off of uh, the uh, revenue that goes to my sex bio from if you attend this class, I'm not seeing that money. That money goes to my sex bio and their other staff. Um, and I want to emphasize that I am uh, not a perfect person and uh, that I uh, dedicate myself to this work as a lifelong project. Um, and that is uh, what we are working on is uh, transforming ourselves and the systems we live in at the same time. Um, great. Uh, thank you for joining us. Let's talk a little bit about political economy. Um, so there's, uh, let's, let's start with what is political economy. Political economy is just the combination of politics and economics together. It says that we cannot look at a political system that is not uh, inherently embedded with an economic system, and we cannot look at an economic system that is not inherently embedded with a political system. Uh, one just more concrete example of that would be that in any relationship between an employer and an employee, you're going to have a contract. And if one person or one party uh, violates that contract, uh, the other party is going to want to call on someone to enforce that contract, typically the state. And uh, depending on what kind of political economy you live in, uh, the state will have a friendlier relationship either with the employer or with the employee. That raises the question, what are the kinds of political economies that we can live in? And there are two really broad ones. One is capitalism and one is socialism. And we have here capitalism on the right and socialism on the left. And to be clear, I want to make sure that everyone understands Socialism is not anything the government does, and capitalism is not anything businesses do. You can have socialist businesses, and you can have capitalist governments. In fact, here in the United States, we do have a capitalist government. So what are they then? Well, capitalism is when the owners are in control, and socialism is when the workers are in control. That raises the question, control of what? And the answer to that is control over the means of production. And you can see that there's a tug of war happening. There's always, uh, every group is always vying for power over the means of production. That's where the power lies. Um, so the workers will try to get power over the means of production any way they can, and the owners will try to get means of production any way they can. And uh, I emphasize that because it's not always a clear binary or dichotomy uh, between the two. Uh, whether we're in socialism or whether we're in capitalism or whether the workers are in control or whether the owners are in control. Um, there's, there's, in that tug of war, there's a spectrum and it's not always obvious uh, what kind of political economy we're operating under. But that's the tension. That's what we call the dialectic, uh, the, the operating tensions of, of what we're looking at. So what are means of production? Examples include uh, land, education, materials, including factories and supplies and all those kinds of things, or, or the site itself, uh, the storefront, um, bodies, labor, I highlight that one and many other things, but the, the labor is uh, what I highlight because labor is the particular kind of means of production that will determine uh, whether we are part of the working class or part of the owning class. Uh, that is to say that if I own no other means of production beside my own ability to perform labor and I go and I perform labor and then I get paid by uh, by someone to do that labor that means 
that I am part of the working class. I, I rely on my work, my labor, uh, to uh, provide for my livelihood. Whereas if I uh, own some other means of production, whether that's a factory or, or what have you, and then I hire other people to come in and do the work, and then I profit off of their labor, then I'm part of what is called the owning class. I'm, uh, I am identified as a capitalist. Um, now, you may have heard the terms proletariat to refer the, to the working class or bourgeoisie to refer to the owning class, just different words meaning the same thing. Um, one thing I do want to emphasize is that just being pro-capitalism does not make someone a capitalist. Uh, to be a capitalist, you have to own those means of production. Um, to be pro-capitalism just means you are pro-capitalism. Um, to further clarify that uh, distinction of, of what is and what is not a means of production, I'm going to emphasize the difference between personal property and private property. So the example here is that personal property is, for example, the house that you live in and personally use that is not considered a means of production. Uh, you live in it, it's yours, uh, your laptop, your toothbrush, your pencil, those are all your personal property. But if you own a house and you rent that house out and you profit off of other people living in that house, then that house is your private property. And to you, that house is a means of production. To the people living in it, that house is their personal property. So that's that distinction. Um, so if you ever hear people saying uh, that uh, socialists are out for your toothbrush, um, they, they're not interested. Your toothbrush is your personal property. Your toothbrush would only become your private property if you rented out your toothbrush to other people for them to do work and then you profited off of that. I don't recommend doing that. Uh, just to clarify that uh, personal property and private property uh, distinction and that the means of production specifically refers to private property. Great. Uh, so that's a, the general uh, topic of political economy, but to take this into that my sex bio territory of how this is connected to sexuality uh, and, and why it's important to have this grounding in order to go into that. Um, we're going to take a look at capitalist feminism versus socialist feminism. Uh, and what do those things mean? Uh, we'll start with capitalist feminism. That one says that uh, we achieve feminism and gender equality when all people are able to climb the corporate ladder of success uh, with equal opportunity. Um, and in that way, if you end up being poor, um, then that's your own fault at that point. Now, some people believe we've already achieved that. Some people uh, don't think we've achieved that, but that's all they want. They still will allow for, uh, for poverty. Uh, socialist feminism, on the other hand, says that uh, not only is uh, are the forces of poverty always going to disproportionately affect um, women and trans and queer folk, um, but that even a cis hetero white man dying of poverty on the street is not particularly feminist either. Um, and socialist feminism says that we need to uh, abolish poverty itself and that in order to do that we need to abolish the mechanism by which poverty is created which is capitalism uh, and it's when the means of production are democratically controlled that we can ensure that no one is living in poverty um, to put it in a uh, pithy way um, liberalism which is a form of capitalism liberalism is the belief that no poor queer person of color should die just because they are queer or of color but they can die because they're poor. Socialism says we don't want that. We don't want anyone to die because they're poor. We don't want anyone to be poor in the first place. Um, now, I do want to emphasize here that both things are true, that uh, capitalists of marginalized identities have a longer and richer legacy and history of uh, providing for their marginalized communities more than white male capitalists. Um, so that is true. And it is also true that black capitalism or uh, woman led capitalism will not save all black people or all women uh, just the same way that uh, capitalism led by white men has not saved all white men. Um, and so those tensions do 
uh, exist, both of those things are true. Um, so this is the intro that I give uh, at the beginning of every fucking capitalism talk, just to get people on the same page. So looking through some resources that can help us navigate these things, uh, some offerings I have for you. My Sex Bio is a really great website, really great stuff on there. Um, and they offer a variety of courses uh, all around reclaiming sexual autonomy. Um, I facilitate the fucking capitalism series, looking at how our sexuality is connected to a political economy. So there's that. Um, my link tree, you can find me on a variety of social media. Um, and then uh, these next things are uh, really great for exploring political economy. There's uh, a poster uh, that uh, goes more into that private versus personal property. Mumbo Jumbo, that's a really excellent one, comes from the Black Socialists of America. Um, they have uh, an excellent glossary that looks at some of the uh, fancy socialist terms you might be hearing people throw around. Um, and then that particular video uh, from Richard Wolff, uh, 21st Century Socialism, is my favorite intro video on the topic. Uh, definitely strongly recommend that one. Um, the two articles, Anti-Socialism and Sex and Socialism, are from me, uh, my gift to y'all. Anti-Socialism looking at political economy itself, Sex and Socialism looking at some of those connections to sexuality. And not everyone's going to read Marx's Capital. It's a several hundred page series of volumes uh, that are uh, infamously uh, notorious, infamously difficult to read. Um, but the uh, Marx's Capital illustrated comic book is fantastic. I, I strongly recommend that one to get your bearings on Marxism. Um, and there are a variety of other uh, comic books on uh, capitalism and capitalist analysis, including on, on Marxist analysis specifically. But that's one that I offer to you. Um, I hope you uh, check these out and, and come discuss with us in class. Thank you.